Have you ever wondered how Git works behind the scenes? Let's go ahead and initialize this empty folder as a Git repository. When we initialize the folder, a folder named .git is created. If we take a look inside, we see several files and folders. We have a head file, as well as additional metadata files for our local repository, such as config and description. And we also have several folders like branches, objects and refs. We can see that the head file contains a string that looks like a path, ref slash head slash master. Let's look for that path in the .git folder. We have the refs folder and the head subdirectory, but no master file or folder. Why is that? Because we haven't made any commits to the master branch yet. So let's change that by creating a file, adding it to our staging area, and committing it to the master branch. As usual, we get a commit hash when that commit has been made. Let's once again navigate to the .git folder. You'll notice there's a few more files in the main directory, and we also have a logs folder. When we take a look in that folder and read the head file, we can see the logs for the branch which is currently checked out. Let's navigate back and take a look into the ref slash heads folder. Notice that there's now a file called master. When reading the contents of that file, we'll see that it's in fact a long form hash of the commit that we just made. So a ref is effectively a user friendly name for a commit hash, and this is Git's internal way of representing branches and tags. If we go and take a look at the objects folder, we can see several subfolders, each with two characters. Those first two characters match up to the first two characters of hashes within our Git repository. For example, the commit hash begun with D9, so let's view that folder. In that folder, you can see that the file name is the remainder of the hash. So surely we can just read the contents of the file and see the contents of the commit, right? Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. When objects are stored in Git, they are compressed, which is why we cannot read it using the cat command. Instead, we can use the git cat dash file command with the dash p flag. You'll notice that we get information about the commit author, commit message, and some information about a tree with another hash. So let's use git cat dash file again, but this time using the hash for the tree. You'll notice that we now get a blob, and you guessed it, when we run git cat dash file on the hash of that blob, we get the contents of the actual file. That's the magic behind git. Refs are user-friendly names that point to a commit hash, representing a branch or a tag. The commit contains a hash to a tree, and the tree will contain information about other trees or blobs. So we've renamed the existing file and also added an additional file to the folder. We've staged the changes, committed them to our master branch, and now we've started using git cat dash file on the new commit. We can see that there's now a tree hash and a parent hash so the previous commit. And when we run git cat dash file on the tree hash, we can see the two files listed. But interestingly, the hash for the file that we renamed is the exact same as the hash as it was in our previous commit. That's because git is intelligent enough to realize it's the exact same file contents. So rather than creating it as a blob once again and storing it, it optimizes and points to that existing file. Now if we navigate to our .git folder and take a look in ref slash heads, we can see that the master file has been updated with the latest commit hash. Navigating up to the logs folder, we can see the additional commit also listed. But there's something missing. We haven't added a remote repository yet. So let's add GitHub as a remote location, rename the branch to main and push the repository to GitHub. As we've now added the remote location, Let's go ahead and take a look in the .git slash refs folder. Notice that we now have a remotes folder. When we navigate into it, we see a folder for origin, as that's what we called our remote location. And in that, a file called main with the latest commit hash. So now we can see that the hash of the local repository and the remote locations are the same. <laughs>